How's everyone doing? I'm Carlos here with Code Academy. And in this video, we'll learn how to use Visual Studio in order to add a Razor page to an existing application. We'll use Visual Studio's features to create a view page, which will include the code behind file, and then run the application to see it in action. We'll also look into how layouts are utilized by updating the main layout with links to newly created pages and see how they make use of the view data property. Now, this video assumes that you're already familiar with Visual Studio and that you have it installed and that you also have either a basic Razor Pages application or know how to build a template. You should also have an understanding of what a page model is and how they interact with their corresponding view pages. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have a basic application here called Test App that was built using Visual Studio's template, and we can open it up to see all the folders that it created for us. Now we can add new project items to your Pages folder by right-click on the Pages node on the Solution Pad then going to add and then selecting new file. If you're on Windows, it would be add and then new item. So let's go ahead and add a new file here. Now we'll be provided with numerous options for what kind of file we want to create from a Razor layout page to a middleware class. In our case, we want to create both a view page and its corresponding page model. So under ASP.NET Core, select Razor page with model. Let's go ahead and name it about and explore how our solution pad is updated. Now we can see a new file was created under the pages folder. There should be a file called about.cshtml with a dropdown that contains the page model about.cshtml.cs. If we take a look in about.cshtml, we'll see that the generated view page will contain an at page directive, the at model directive specifying the corresponding model with the complete namespace, and an empty code block below. If we open up the dropdown, we'll see our about.cshtml.cs which is the code behind file. Now the page model will contain a few necessary use these statements and a class with the same name as our view page with the keyword model added to it. We'll also see that it's using the same namespace as our other view pages and that it's inheriting from the page model class by the use of the colon. Now, before we navigate to the view page, let's go ahead and fill it out a little bit. Let's navigate to about.cshtml and let's add a header indicating what page we've landed on. Below our code block, let's add an H1 header, and let's simply say, this is the about page. We can then run our application by clicking on the play button on the upper left-hand side. If it builds successfully, it should launch a Google Chrome tab with our application running. So we can directly navigate to our newly created page by typing in slash about. So let's add that to the URL and hit enter. It should now direct us to the About page and render its contents. So now let's go ahead and take a look at routing. Now with default Razor Pages applications, each page's URL matches its file name. So if we go to slash about, Razor Pages is smart enough to go ahead and look for that file in the Pages folder. Now it would be very useful if we had an accessible link to direct us to this new page instead of having it to type it on the URL every time. We can do this by updating the navigation bar in the header, which is found in the layout page. So back in Visual Studio, let's go ahead and stop the application. And in our solution pad, let's go ahead and open up the layout file, which is found under the shared folder. I'm going to go ahead and resize our solution pad just a little bit. There we go. And I'll zoom out as well so we can see a little bit more of the code. So the coding here acts as a template for all the pages that reference it. Our content pages like about.cshtml will be rendered through the call to render body, which is found here on line 34. As you can see here, we have a header that's being rendered for all content pages. And we can simply add a new link for our newly created page in here. This header and new link will be populated in all other content pages as well. So on line 20, we have an unordered list containing all the navigation links for our header. So let's go ahead and open up a new list tag. We'll be using, we'll add an anchor tag within it. And we'll be adding the same class we have for the other link pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. We'll paste it in here. We can omit the ASP area and we'll add an uh, tag helper called ASP page and we'll link it directly to our about page. So ASP page is equal to 
we can simply add slash about here and the text would be about. So now let's go ahead and run our application again. Take into Google Chrome here and you'll see that our header has been updated with a new navigation link for about. So if you click on the about page, it will directly navigate us to that content page. With this, we'll have the link in the header no matter where we're at. Lastly, let's take a look at how our layout makes use of the view data title property. So back in our layout page, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the application from running. And we can see here at the top how it's being used within the title tags. Now the title defines the document's title that is shown in the browser's title bar or pages tab. And if we look at index.cshtml, we can see how each content page has set a specific value unique to that view page. The layout would make use of this value and insert it in the browser's title bar, and it would change depending on what page we're currently at. Now we can take a closer look at this using Chrome Developer Tools. If you haven't used Developer Tools before, well, there's simply a set of developer tools built directly into the browser that can help you edit pages on the fly, debug, or view how pages are structured. Now, before we move on, if we look in the upper left-hand corner, we'll find the browser tab, which is rendering the text that was found in the title tags. Okay, so in order to work with developer tools, within Chrome, we can open up developer tools by right-clicking and selecting inspect. So I'll zoom in a little bit more here and expand the inspector here. We'll make sure that we're in the elements tag. And in here, we can actually open up our head tag. Within the head tag, we'll notice our title tag here, rendering the exact value that was set inside the index.cshtml page. Once again, within our index.cshtml, we'll see that the value set for view data title property is set to home page. And if we look at the layout and we look at the view data title property, Razor Pages will actually read out the value and render it on the browser, depending on the content page it is. So with index page, since the value of this property is set to home page, it will render that value inside our browser. So its value, it's being rendered right here. And if we navigate to privacy page and do the same, we'll see that the actual value from that view data title property is being rendered for that page. Since we haven't set any values for the about page, it should render any text. So as you can see here, it's completely blank. We could change this by stopping the application, going to about.cshtml, and in here we can simply add a new view data property. So let's go ahead and add the view data property. It's called view data. We'll set the title to be equal to about. We can go ahead and run our application again. And now our title tag should hold the actual text about. So we go ahead and inspect once again, and we navigate to the about page. We'll expand our head here and look into the tag. We'll see that the about text has been rendered. So to review, we first saw how to create a new razor page using Visual Studio. We saw how it created a basic skeleton, which we can add on to it. We also saw how to work with the layout, which provides the user with a consistent experience as they navigate from page to page. And lastly, we'll work with the view data property, which is a container for data to be passed from the page model to the content page. The more we use Visual Studio, the more we'll be able to make use of the features provided. Hopefully this video gave you a good foundation on how to navigate the IDE and get comfortable exploring its uses. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.